What's up, Tim Sykes here. Um, got a special video for you today, uh, really looking into the details of one of my top upcoming students here, Matt Monaco. Um, pretty amazing what his profit chart uh, has been like. You know, to be fair, we've had a record uh, stock market. You know, this has been the strongest 100 days uh, in the stock market ever. But he was also prepared. And I know a lot of people who are unprepared. So my goal with this video um, and his goal, because I'll let him talk, I do enough talking. Um, but our goal is to really get you prepared for whatever happens in the market, whether we have the next 100 days or even better, or we cool down or something in between, or you know we get a, another hot 100 day streak in a year or two from now. All you can do is prepare. You can't control the market, um, but you can be prepared. And there's many different ways to prepare, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope that you're watching the new boot camp. Leave a comment below if you've started watching our boot camp. Let me know uh, what you think, whether you're in day one, day two, day seven, day 14. And understand, I'm getting a lot of questions about this boot camp. I'll, I'll post the link to this just below this video. Um, there's just going to be one link so that you have no excuse. We have priced this literally like 1 20th of what it should be priced at. A lot of people are recognizing that. But you don't have to do it in 30 days. Some people are like messaging me like, oh, I have a full-time job. I have, I'm in school. I can't commit 30 days. That's fine. This is just suggested and you get basically one lesson per day. I have some, uh, you know, diehard students who have finished it in like three or four days and they actually were still surprised because they thought that they would, you know, just finish it in like a day or two um, at crazy speeds and they're putting in 10 hours a day times three or four days. So it's like 30, 40, maybe 50 hours of study, uh, depending on, uh, you know, who you are and, and how you want to take it. Um, all I can do is encourage you not to rush through it. Okay. Um, when Matt and I started making this, he was right around, he's right around here somewhere. <laughs> he's made uh, a little over $200,000 in like four months since. So he's been averaging like $50,000 per month. Uh, since we made this boot camp, and again, it's a hot market, but I think going over the basics, going over the patterns, going over the rules um, has helped tremendously. I love all these tweets. Keep tweeting at me what you think. Uh, Courtney uh, has been loving it. She says worth every penny or worth period every pe period penny period. I like that. Um, here is Phil, um, and he says you know it's it's worth a hundred times. I don't know if it's worth a hundred times, but it's definitely worth. 20, 30, maybe 40 or 50 times um, the price. And it is so imperative that you watch it because it's actually structured and it goes over the basics. Uh, Gregory says, you know, we can sell it for over a thousand. I know, um, but I wanted to give you guys, you know, just no excuse whatsoever not to study this. I wanted to price it so uh, ridiculously cheaply. Uh, here's Igor, he just finished it. And he said, fantastic course, highly recommend anyone starting or in the middle of their journey as this pack of super useful information. Now going for round two. And that's another thing. It's yours to keep. It's not like you watch it once and then like, it, you know, it's mission impossible and then it like disintegrates. Like you get to keep this. You can watch it two, three, ten times. Um, I know that some people don't want repetition, but I think that it's good. Um, you know, here's Krista uh, on six days. Uh, she says she's loving it. So much information. And the workbook exercises and the quizzes are fun and funny. Um, and yeah, we, we tried a little something different with this uh, course. It's not just me and Matt talking. There's also uh, exercises and quizzes, and we try to make it fun. Uh, Revenge Trader also said day 11, uh, you know, a lot of tidbits he was completely unaware of. And I could go on and on all day about all the tweets. I love them. I'm sorry if I didn't mention you, but this video belongs to Matt. Um, I will let him take it away. He's going to analyze, um, you know, what he's done right the past few weeks and months to really have a lot of success compared to, you know, what he was doing, you know, earlier and not having a lot of success. Uh, we see this with a lot of my students, year two, year three, year four, everything really crystallizes, all that preparation, um, especially when there's a hot market. So hopefully you enjoy this. Uh, video and also uh, besides just telling me you know if you started the boot camp uh, or what chapter you're on and again I'm gonna post the link just below this video so there's one link uh, but also do me a favor and just thank Matt um, you know say thank you Matt for all your hard work because um, not only has he made you know now over a quarter of a million dollars 
Um, and I think he has to update this too, because I, I think he made 20,000 last week and 20,000 the week before. So I think he's actually close to, closer to 300,000. But just thank him, um, because I, I'm so grateful for students who make a lot and then also are willing to give back to the community. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for all the students and I'm, I'm grateful for all the help. And if you ever wonder why this uh, boot camp is so organized, it's because of Matt. It ain't because of me. Um, I'm a little overwhelmed. So I need more successful students uh, to help me teach and help, uh, you know, explain the strategy. And it's fantastic. You know, I think Matt going over the basics and the rules, teaching other people, uh, you know, he, he keeps up and he stays disciplined and that helps him. And then you guys all benefit from learning from, you know, my newest six figure student. And if he keeps up, he'll be a seven figure student too. That's how this works. Um, you know, I'm in year 12 now of teaching. So we see what works and what doesn't. And a lot of people are asking me about this boot camp, Like, why couldn't I come out with this earlier? Um, frankly, I didn't have Matt and I didn't have a lot of uh, the other uh, helpers that I have now, like we've been building our team. Um, you know, I, in the beginning, it was just me teaching. And a lot of people thought I was full of BS. They thought I was lucky. Now, as more and more students um, are having this same kind of, you know, profit chart, um, people are beginning to see, wait a minute, there, there might actually be something here. Sykes might actually not be as crazy or as fraudulent or as lucky as I thought. And again, I don't mind the haters. I don't mind the doubters. I get that most penny stocks are scams. I get that most people who teach on the internet are scams. Um, and that's, I think, what I'm most proud of with this boot camp because no other product that I've had, um, you know, puts everything together in one, uh, you know, nice box like this. And it helps show off Matt's knowledge because he knew nothing, you know, before he joined my challenge and before he started learning. Um, it helps show off my whole teaching style of how, you know, it's not just about creating students uh, who make, you know, six or seven figures, but, you know, they're not relying on me. I know a lot of people where they just give picks and, you know, their, their students aren't even students. They're just subscribers or customers. My students, I don't think of as customers or subscribers, okay? I think of everybody who, you know, studies as my student. And some people are like, oh, Tim, I can't believe how rude you are to, to a customer, to a paying customer. And I'm like, I'm rude because I want you to be a good student, okay? It's in my own best interest to create the most successful students possible. That's how my business has grown. That's what I am so dedicated, um, you know, my life for this, right? Like I work crazy hours and I donate all of my trading profits to charity, right? I'm not in this for money. I'm in this to change the world so that people begin to learn that, wait a minute, there are consistent and reliable and replicable patterns in penny stocks. And I'm not that smart. I'm not that good at math. I'm not lucky. I'm not a fraud. I'm just experienced. I have 20 years of experience in this niche and I'm willing to share every single thing because there are so many newbies, so many unprepared traders, so many lazy traders who just want hot picks and you can profit off of them by learning the patterns because the lazy traders keep doing the same things. And so if they're doing the same things and they're losing money doing that and you study what they're doing wrong and you do the opposite, then you can consistently make money. That's the whole thing here. Okay. I'm not creating anything, uh, you know, out of scratch. I'm, I'm not uh, that original. I'm just passing down lessons from 20 plus years. And if you're offended by my grammar, if you're offended by my, um, you know, being real and blunt about, you know, the many idiots, fakes and frauds in this industry, please don't learn. Do me a favor. Okay. You can watch this boot camp or not, but just don't waste my time because contrary to what most people think, time is the most valuable asset, not money. I have enough money. I donate millions to charity. I have too much money, but I don't have enough time. So if you're lazy, if you just want hot picks, if you don't actually want to study, do not waste my time. Please do me that favor. Do yourself that favor. Because if you're lazy, we are not going to get along. If you think that I'm not going to come down hard on you when you break a rule, like breaking rule number one, like some students do, rule number one is cutting losses quickly. I will come down on you like the Hebrew hammer. Not because I'm trying to be mean, but because I'm trying to help you 
stay disciplined because too many traders do not minimize small losses. They let their small losses turn into potential big disasters. And then they do not have charts like this. I want you to have a profit chart like this. So enough from me, Matt is gonna take it away. Again, there's gonna be one link underneath this video. Click it, watch the uh, boot camp. I can't even think what I'm saying right now. Uh, just, just watch it and study up. And again, leave a comment underneath this video. Thank you, Matt, for all his hard work. Thank you everybody who are dedicated students. Forget the lazy people, but my thanks to you if you're dedicated. How's it going traders? My name is Matthew Monaco, also known as Mono underscore trader. You may have seen me on Twitter or Improfitly. Those are my usernames, only usernames or some imposters out there. So Mono underscore trader. Um, yeah, so I just want to give you an update on what was just a crazy week, uh, August, the first week of August. A lot happened. I passed a quarter million dollars in profits. I launched a new boot camp with Tim, which I want to discuss. And I am now a moderator in Tim Sykes's challenge chat. Awesome week. Um, super blessed. Uh, very thankful for everything that's happened. But I want to go over how I got there, uh, the patterns I've been using, the trades I've been taking, uh, and just discuss all you guys so that way you, hopefully, wherever you are in your journey, uh, can either take advantage of an offer like the boot camp or just review some of my trades and maybe tweak your style um, to see my approach. I just wanna help any struggling traders out there move towards consistent profitability. That's the goal. Uh, we all wanna be consistently profitable traders. So I'm just gonna show some proof um, on what happened. Absolutely awesome week. Uh, so Tim recently congratulated me as a new moderator in the challenge chat. Very thankful for that. And it was because I passed $250,000 in profits. Wasn't one trade, wasn't two trades, 10 trades. Didn't happen in two or three months. Uh, the profits did, but the journey was three years. I'm on my third year. June uh, 2017 actually is when I first joined the challenge and it is now August 2020. So a little over three years into this journey. And that's how long it took me to reach this milestone. As you can see, I've taken 2,000 trades now over that time frame. A lot of them, you know, What's my one percent? Fifty-two percent. In the beginning, like I was a consistent loser. Every single trade would just basically be a loss. And now I average on the last three, four months between sixty and sixty-five percent. That's my current win percentage. So we're slowly inching this up. Um, but it's been an awesome run. And the point again, I say this all the time. If you've watched any of my videos on Twist or the New State Trade Treats or my own personal YouTube channel. It takes a long time. I laid a foundation. This is the way I like to think about it. I laid a foundation for two, two and a half years, um, studied everything in the challenge, all the webinars to then have a solid foundation that I could then build upon. And when 2020 came, the market was crazy, I stepped up to the plate. And that foundation that I had of all this trading knowledge, I then started to apply to the market. And that's why I've seen some crazy returns the last couple of months. Um, May uh, was my best month of 2020 at the time, 48,000. I then nearly doubled it in June for $93,000. And then July, I just ended up 50,000. And then the first week of August, um, this week alone, I'm up about 22,000. And that is how I was able to pass a quarter million dollars in profits. It happened very quickly. A lot of it was because the month before in April, I sat down for 30 days with Tim Sykes and filmed a boot camp that we call the 30 day boot camp. I'll get into that in a second. Uh, but yeah, just look at my profit curve. So, like I said, June 2017 is when I started. I started with $2,000 account, basically blew it up, lost half it here. I was a college kid, didn't have a ton of money, started some side jobs. Um, and for basically a year, I continued to study. I just was a broke college kid, I didn't have any money saved up as much as I could. And then into 2019, I started a podcast called Beyond the PDT, really started getting into trading. I was like, man, I'm going to graduate college soon. I need to figure this out because I don't want that full-time job. Um, you know, I was a software engineer and I had a really horrible internship experience. I didn't want to be a software engineer. So I really started focusing on trading, found some consistent profitability by really engaging in the challenge, making a lot of friends, um, and just talking to other successful traders that you see in the channels, like Jack Kellogg, um, Kyle Williams, they were very influential in my trading and I was profitable throughout 2019. Um, not a ton, you know, a couple hundred dollars, a couple thousand dollar months here and there. And then towards the end of 2019, I started gaining some more confidence. The market started to get really hot. And in 2020, that's when everything took off. But like I was saying, 
the month of April, I sat down with Tim for 30 days. Uh, that was right in here, this little, right before the parabolic swing. And went over a ton of material. I helped design this course with him on everything I learned in that two years. I really tried to break down into 30 individual days. That way, if you're a new trader, you hopefully, the idea, the idea is you don't need two full years um, of trading knowledge uh, to build that foundation. That's how long it took me. So I try to compress into 30 days everything you need to know in 30 days so that way you can really jumpstart your journey. Now, you're not gonna be probably a $100,000 a year trader at the end of 30 days, but the goal is to speed up your learning curve. Uh, that was what I wanna do with it. I wanted to help new traders because it's overwhelming when you first get started. So I started this bootcamp with Tim. Um, the link will be below this video somewhere, but yeah, it's 30 days, one video a day between 10 and 15 minutes. It comes with a quiz, a workbook. We cover a ton of great topics here. There are also bonuses. You get Tim's book and Penny Stocking Framework with this deal. Um, and so if we go through, there's a ton of tasks and these are just some of the days, the bootcamp days. You know, we start off with the basics. We don't know what you don't know. So we have to start off easy, um, introduce you to the stock market, why Tim and I like to focus on penny stocks, and then we get into his patterns, um, the penny stock framework, which you also get that DVD, so the days complement each other, and then we break down the days. Um, the first red day, the first green day, the multi-day breakout are all patterns I still trade to this day. Tim trades, his other top students trade to this day. And then towards the end, we go over Tim's plays on very specific days, like April 21st to 28th, um, and then UAVS, if you were trading back in April, that was one of the craziest moves that we've ever seen. So we dedicated a whole day to it um, and go over his trades and why he was in the trade. It's incredible. If you've seen trading tickers, that is why trading tickers is so good. Tim Gertani breaks down his trades, why he was in the trades, his thought process. And I want to do the same thing with Tim. So that's what we did during these days. So yeah, so focusing uh, on my specific trades, I picked out a couple. So that's the boot camp. People are loving it. A lot of ton of reviews. Definitely make sure you check it out. I want to go over some of the trades I've taken the last couple of weeks um, because a lot of them apply directly to this boot camp and specific days in the boot camp. So if we look at some of the tweets I've been tweeting, uh, RLFTF was a recent OTC runner. Crazy stock. It went from like five cents to 95 cents over the course of several days. Full supernova. Uh, like I was saying, that's a specific day in the boot camp. Um, what is a supernova? Digesting it. Day 13 right there. We go over the whole thing. Um, the specific pattern I played on it was the breakout, which is day 15. So if we look at this stock, I locked in 5.5K on this. Uh, what was the date on this? August 6th. I think that was Thursday last week. Uh, locked it in. Um, but if we look at my trades, the green uh, diamonds here are buys and the reds are sells. So I started in a little early, probably had a little too much size, got shaken out a little bit, but then I took a step back and looked at the big picture, looked at the supernova pattern, saw the big you know, picture on the daily chart, the OTC breakouts, which is a huge pattern, especially for those with small accounts. So I started sizing back in. I was like, I need to just be in this play. It's going to work. It's trading incredible volume. Uh, OTCs have been hot last week. So I after getting shaken out, I bought back in and then sold into the spike. Doesn't look like a big move when you look at the whole uh, move of the stock here, but this was like 15% like in a day, <laughs> and not even in a day, within an hour. That was 15%. That's crazy. You're not going to see that investing uh, you know, over the course of a year, especially the way the stock market's been. It's been crazy. So I locked it in um, and yeah, it continued substantially higher. I played it a couple more times. Um, after its parabolic run, it panicked pretty hard. That's a pretty common move. Um, a lot of times the stocks get ahead of themselves, people have FOMO, which is fear of missing out. They chase the stock. And then once, you know, buyers, they need to take a break. There's not unlimited buyers. It'll pull back pretty severely. So scooped it up again. Again, doesn't look like a big move, but that was basically a 10% bounce in a minute. So in and out very quickly. Uh, we go over level two. I forget what day it is specifically. It's pretty early on. Day six, key to OTC's stocks. Um, it's very important, especially if you're trading OTCs. Listed, OT, uh, level two does matter, but it's a little more difficult and moves faster. So if you're looking at OTC stocks in particular, you definitely need to be watching the level two because you can see buyers, you can see sellers. Uh, Tim breaks it down, uh, goes over an example or two, so that way you know what to look for. Then later in the day, um, continued to hold. It was holding its highs and I bought back in. 
And then there was a huge seller I saw on the level two, which is why it's so important to use the level two. INTL was the market maker. Um, if you want to maybe go back, you could use like some on-demand software and watch this trade live. But he was selling a huge hidden size. Um, so I started getting out. I was like, I don't like this. Uh, it should have broken high a day and much smoother, in my opinion, at that point in time. But the market maker kept it down. So I got out. And then what happened when he disappeared, I got back in. So that's the importance of understanding the level too. And just admitting when you're wrong. Um, cutting losses quickly is Tim's number one rule for a good reason. And the reason why traders are successful. To be successful, you need good risk management and you need to make sure your losses are small or cut them quickly. Because if your losses are bigger than your gains, you're never gonna be able to see an exponential profit curve because you know one loss will wipe out several weeks months, days, maybe even years worth of gains, depending on the size. And we go over that. Tim breaks down and discusses with me a big loss I had the month prior in February. February, I've talked about this a couple of times. Um, it, I started seeing some consistency, uh, not nothing crazy, but play came along. W-O-R-K was the ticker. Uh, work, if you look it up, it's like a large cap uh, stock. It's not really in my niche, but I started playing that stock. Thought it was going to break out over 30 a share back in February. It didn't. I was wrong. I kept adding to it. And eventually the loss just became too big. Um, and I took a $5,000 loss, which was by far my biggest loss at the time. Still to this day is my biggest loss. Um, so I don't want to, I just, you know, if you want to be successful, you have to avoid that. So we have two full days dedicated to that day 10 understanding the basics of risk management. It's a numbers game at the end of the day, trading. If your losses are small and you have more wins that are bigger than your losses, you're gonna be a profitable trader. Sounds simple, um, but it's not easy. And then cutting losses quickly, the importance of it. And I can't emphasize that enough. You need to cut your losses quickly if you're gonna be a trader and you wanna be in this for the long term. So I got back in into the parabolic at the end of the day. Again, my sales, I took a meat of the move. I didn't nail it all, but from 62 and my best sell was like at like 73, I think. So that's huge. Another 15, 20% move there in under 30 minutes. Uh, absolutely wild volatility on the stock. I hope we see some OTC movers into the rest of the year throughout August. Uh, it's been a little while since the OTC market's been hot and we're seeing some good volume. So I hope it continues. And yeah, here's another example. Uh, this is from August 3rd, an OTC breakout on OPTI. So if we look at this chart, I locked in 4,600 on this one more or less. And yeah, same same type of pattern. I don't have a daily chart pulled up here, but the 552 five, level was very important. So as it started breaking out over five, which is a key whole half dollar, I mean a whole half, like the whole cent number in this case, but same concept. Those whole numbers, whether it's a penny, five cents, 10 cents, a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, when they're the key whole dollar levels, even like two dollars and fifty cents, so just like those key psychological levels, um, they're pretty significant on the chart. A lot of the times people will put their stops there, will put buy orders there, because it's easier for them, think about it, to put at a dollar than maybe a dollar and nine cents for just the average Joe out there who's not a day trader and actively sitting in front of their screens. So I started buying, took the morning move. Uh, this was the beginning of the week before we saw some OTCs crazy. So my play on OTCs the last couple months has been to take the moves when they're there. If I have a big move like this, I'm gonna lock it in and just move on because OTCs haven't continued spiking throughout the day. But we saw a ton of great strength here. I started buying the dip, sold again. And then we had this little midday shakeout. Um, my risk at this point was uh, I still had some shares from the morning, so it was more or less five, and it just shook me out. It wasn't the best play, but I thought I was wrong, so I cut the loss quickly, and I was like, if I'm right, I can just get back in. Uh, I wish, you know, I just stuck to my original plan, but better safe than sorry. Trading is a marathon. It's not a sprint, so you have to play conservatively. Tim likes to say he likes to be a retired trader. Only trade when the trades are ideal. You don't need to force anything. So once it grinded back into the afternoon, we're looking at 2 p.m. Eastern, I started buying into high day and we had a nice rip into close um, from six cents to seven cents. Awesome move. Uh, can't beat that. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. This was the, an OTC breakout. Uh, again, we go over that very, we break it down, go over several examples. Uh, I make sure to go over a bunch of different chart examples so that way you can see when it works, when it doesn't work. And that's multi-day breakout, day 15. So looking at this one, OCGN, this is a listed stock. Um, so I said, great daily breakout. So again, it was a breakout um, with volume. ABCD is a pattern I'll look for. I'll explain a little more when I look at this chart and news. 
Um, could I ask for anything else? And no, like I can't. That's exactly what I'm looking for. That's exactly what Tim teaches. Uh, you want a stock trade in great volume with a catalyst. It increases its spikeability. Um, so yeah, so I was more patient with this one. Didn't have as much size, but locked in 43% on over two grand on this play. So looking at it specifically, so this one, I missed the morning spike. Didn't want to play it, but come 11, that's when you start seeing this pattern and that's an ABCD. So um, the way they call it is it's like four steps and they just call it ABCD. So the A is a morning spike. A B is a pullback. A C is when it's grinding back up. And then the D is when it spikes to new highs. So I had a really good tweet about it. Let me go try to dig this up. Um, and I compared it to a runner. So let me look. It was early early on in this week, right here. So, so Mason uh, tweeted at me and he was like, what exactly causes the resistance and pullback or C in the ABCD pattern? My response was, you have to think of it like you're sprinting. The A happens when it, you sprint as far as you can for as long as you can. So a stock spikes as high as it can for as long as it can until the buyers dry up and then you crash, hence the B. So that's the pullback. There's no more buyers. Um, so it's got to pull back. It finds an equilibrium. It's basic economics, supply, demand. Uh, and now they're tired. So you need to gear those buyers back up. You need more buyers to come in and it takes some time uh, because you're tired. You have to recover, um, AKA C, you're building back your strength. Finally, you keep sprinting to new highs, which is where you've reached D. So if we go back and look at that chart, that's exactly what happened. You sprinted as far as you could, you crashed, you regained your strength midday from 11 to one, and then you were able to fully sprint to new highs, which we saw into the end of the day. Awesome move, awesome sellers here. Um, and I was just really happy with my patience on this one. So this one is a little, you know, I'm mostly a long bias trader. Uh, if you follow my journey at all, like 99% of my trades are long biased, but eventually, you know, shorting, there's money to be made on shorting. So I'm dipping my toes over there and that's exactly what I did. Um, on July 22nd here, this was last month on HTBX. That was an awesome supernova multi-day runner. And then the first red day happened. Why is the first red day matter? Because that's the first time a stock goes red. There's no longer buyers. And especially on a run up after a daily chart where it's just gone from many hundreds of percents, a first red day, a lot of the buyers in that stock are going to start to get out because they're worried the stock's going down again for the first time. That's day 18. We talk about it. A lot of his Tim's um, millionaire, you know, multi six figure students trade the first red day pattern, especially on the short side, there's a ton of money to be made. That's what I was looking to do here on HTBX. Uh, Tim Grittani calls it in his DVD, uh, the overextended gap down. Unfortunately, the gap down here was a little more than I liked, so I didn't chase it. Um, but when it started spec, uh, spiking back up into this area, I shorted it a couple of times, covered, shorted a pop and covered. Um, because again, psychologically, buyers who were in the stock for the last several days, weeks, um, that uh, up multiple hundreds of percent. When's the first time you want to sell? When it goes red, especially for a day, um, you're going to want to get out. So there's a ton of buyers in this. They're looking to sell. And that's why you see this downtrend. And also there's a short sellers who love to take advantage of this pattern. So that's just a quick recap of my trading in the last several weeks, some of the best plays that I've seen. And it all comes back to this boot camp. Super grateful for Tim uh, for making it happen. If we go look at my profit chart here and we just load it up from, we start, started this at April. So the end of April, May 1st till now, we look at what we got, $205,000 since my 30 days with Tim. Now your 30 days with Tim could happen anytime. You can do it at your own pace. I highly recommend you do it one day at a time. Each day comes with a workbook. Each day comes with a 10, 15 minute video to go uh, the workbook complements the video and then you have a quiz you have to pass. It's an incredible offer. And yeah, basically that's what changed. That was a huge turning point in my journey when I sat down with Tim for 30 days. And yeah, since then we're up $205,000. 2020 has been an incredible year. I'm looking to close it strong. I hope any new traders out there watching this, or if you're struggling a little bit, consider the boot camp. I don't want to say it's my baby, but I helped him design it. I, him and I sat down and we were like, what do new traders need to know in 30 days? Hypothetically, if you saw this on day one and you finished it on day 30, we wanted you to be prepared to take the next steps towards being a consistently profitable trader. It's an absolutely awesome guide. I think it's the best one Tim has offered yet. So again, make sure you check it out. That's all for this week. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up on Twitter. I take pride in answering everyone's tweets because I remember what it was like to be a struggling trader. So if you have any questions on patterns, the boot camp days, 
what's wrong with your trading, reach out to me on Twitter. Um, just tweet at MonoTrader. Again, it's spelled right here. Don't believe anyone asking for Bitcoin cryptocurrency. That's not me. Um, so Mono underscore Trader. Give me a tweet. I'll make sure to tweet back at you. Or I'm also on Profitly. Same username, Mono Trader. Uh, people message me every day and I message usually on the weekends on Profitly. I get back to you. I know what it was like to struggle and it took me three years to get here. I want to help other traders who are on their journey, maybe one, two, three years in, get to consistent profitability because there's nothing better than that. And if you're new, just don't give up. It's, it's, it's going to be a struggle. It's difficult. It's not easy, but it will be worth it in the end. So that's all for today, traders. Catch you next time. How's it going, traders? My name's Matt Monaco, also known as MonoTrader, giving you another update just on some trades I've taken this week. Uh, some good trades and then also a bad one I took overnight uh, today. Today is the 12th of August. Uh, so we're gonna break down each of those trades and then kind of tell you where that information is coming from. So that way you could possibly check in on this boot camp that I recently filmed with Tim Sykes where we go over all these patterns. So I'm just gonna share my screen here and walk you through the trades uh, that I posted on Twitter. So if we look at the trades, this is from yesterday, Tuesday, August 11th. Locked in a little over $11,000, literally a dollar over $11,000 uh, yesterday. Uh, it was an awesome day, uh, the best day I've had in several weeks since my best month ever in June. Uh, really you know, awesome market with the OTC's ton of range on them and also a ton of volume. So yeah, I mean, as long as OTCs stay hot, that's pretty much where my focus is gonna be because they offer incredible range huge percent moves and they're just great stocks to grow a small account in um, or really account any size. I mean, a lot of the patterns are covered about halfway through the 30 day bootcamp. We you know, lay a foundation for you and then we really break down as patterns. And then towards the end of that bootcamp, we actually, we actually review a lot of Tim's trades that he took during that time period. So day 15 is a multi-day breakout, which was on SHMP, SHIMP. I don't have the daily chart, but the mid eights to nine, all the way up to 10 were very key resistance levels. And then 10 cents was the huge daily breakout. So going into the morning, I bought some shares immediately near the open, small size to start uh, because it was a little speculative entry, but they had news. And the daily chart has been setting up for several weeks. I have been watching it for several weeks because my approach to these is to once an OTC has made a big percent move, I catch it on my stocks trade scanner and then I add it to a list. And usually at the end of every night, I check in on those. Um, I have price alerts set, so I know if the stocks get above or near the breakout level. So that's how I was alerted to Shimp and also saw the news on it because it was on that list. Like most people probably wouldn't have seen SHMP. It didn't gap up big or anything. There wasn't pre-market volume because it's an OTC. But because it was on a list, of recent runners that I keep track of. I was able to see it before most people, got a really good entry to start. And then once it started ramping up, I decided to add into some dips here to get some strength. This early entry gave me a good basis point. I was basically risking that entry uh, break even on it when I started into this position, um, red green on the day. Red green is a significant level for these OTC stocks, so I added into it. Um, I was The original goal was to swing all day because the breakout was so nice. But once it started uh, around 11 a.m. here, we had a really big move from the mid eights all the way up to basically 11 cents. And in my approach to trading is when a stock gets ahead of itself like that, there's gonna be a pullback. So why would you wanna hold all your shares through the pullback? So I decided to lock in some gains. I think I locked in around 30% of my position there, uh, 10, nine uh, and 11, I filled a little bit. So. Uh, that entry or that exit was totally based on the level two. I saw that the strength of the spike was slowing down. So I decided to take some shares off. Worst case, I could always add them back into a dip. And it was also midday. Midday on OTC stocks is a big deal. It usually is on most stocks, not just OTC, but the volume tends to dry up. So I was like, I'll just add back whenever it pulls back. And if it doesn't, I still have 70% of my position. And I mean, if it goes higher, I will gladly continue to sell. So it pulled back like I expected. This line is the VWAP, uh, volume weighted average price. And a lot of the times they pull back near there. So once it started showing some bottoming action around noon, put some shares back on, and then it coiled up very nicely into 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Eastern to the close. 
is a great time for OTC stocks when volume starts to come back. So once it started perking over this key uh, 102, 10, uh, 10 cents and two and two thousandth of a cent, uh, I added some more and then we got a big spike here. Some volume came in and then because my average was higher at this point, I moved up my risk to more or less this nine six area. If I had to cut, I pretty much would have broken even on the remaining shares, uh, probably a little bit of profit, but that spike came. And again, I felt like it got ahead of itself in this is a five minute chart in 10 minutes. It spiked from this 10 two level all the way up to uh, 11 eight. I couldn't get filled up there, it was a little tough. The spread was a little wacky, but I started selling in the uh, mid to low 11s and got out pretty much my entire shares there because it met my expectations from the, my first entry to there, we we're looking at like a 40% gain. Um, and that was an awesome trade, a uh, basic OTC breakout. Yeah, and we go over it in the boot camp and exactly how you should look for in my approach. I outlined it pretty clear here, but it's also good to hear from Tim Sykes and how he trades them because I know he also traded SHMP a couple of times this day. The other trade was on Gaxi, G-A-X-Y. This is also a former runner. This chart is a little messier. I had a lot of entries and exits because the volume was great and it was a panic dip buy. Uh, so panic dip buys happen after stocks uptrend for multiple days, they're called multi-day runners. So once that happens, uh, stocks need to pull back, they tend to pull back, and OTC stocks in particular tend to pull back pretty severely. So once it started pulling back, this is a very level two heavy strategy to be able to pick the bottoms of these OTC stocks. You can see it in the level two. Uh, that has its own day in the boot camp as well now that I mention it. But basically, I just kept buying dips here on volumes, uh, locking my those shares I bought on dips into perks. And then if I was wrong, I was uh, exiting quickly and then looking for a re-entry. So right off the morning, the morning usually has the best volume on these OTCs. Uh, we got a real nice panic down to the red green level. This is yesterday's close. I got in. And then as soon as we got above view app and we perked up the level two shots of the topping, I got out again. Uh, that's was the first dip by the day. Usually the first dip by is the cleanest unless there's another severe one, which we actually got a pretty severe one later in the day. Bounce just happened a lot longer than usual. That's what's been happening lately. These bounces have been slower. Uh, they're still very good percent gains, but you just have to be more patient with them. Um, and that's just something I've been working on adapting to. Uh, in here, I thought this might be the low for the day. So it took a small gain there. And then I thought we were gonna actually see some nice follow through bounce up into the three cent area, but that didn't happen. Um, so I exited quickly. And yeah, like you could have seen how bad this could have been if I didn't exit quickly, because then we got a real panic down here. Um, and this type of action right here, the long red candles, uh, big percent moves is exactly what you wanna see for a panic. Once buyers stepped up down at the 1.8 level, I bought shares back in and flipped them, quickly sold into the two ones, um, bought back because I thought we were seeing a double bottom or a higher low and then bounce. The initial plan was for it to bounce then and back up into the, you know, two, two, two threes, back into this BWAP area, but it didn't. It was very weak snock. So I got rid of those ads quickly and then it went lower. It looked like we had this little fake crack low a day and what another thing we've been seeing, uh, we saw it on RLFT app as well. It cracks low day really quickly and then will quickly reclaim and then the real bounce will happen after it shakes out all the early buyers. So I got in thinking that was gonna happen. The bounce didn't come, it was a weak stock. So I exited quickly. Once it held up for another about 15, 20 minutes, I decided to get back in because I was like, all right, even though it's not panicking, now I have a solid risk level off one seven here. So got back in, sold up into the one nines and twos, uh, and then let it do its thing for basically an hour. After we uh, started showing a little bit of a trend here, I was like, all right, looks like the bottom is basically in for the day, or at least the morning. We have a series of higher lows. I got back in, I was like, we haven't really seen a big bounce yet. It's just been a slow grind upwards. So got back in with some smaller size because the my risk had to be a little wider here and it's not so much of a panic dip buy at the moment. It's just looking for a bounce on a stock that's gotten hammered and just hasn't bounced yet, uh, basically. So got in, was risking the one nines area, um, like 185, and then we grinded up through VWAP, had a little mini parabolic here I got out into, and that was my trade on Gaxi for the day.
Awesome day overall on Tuesday, 11,000, which followed up my Monday. Monday, I had a little over a $9,000 day. So in those two days, locked in 20 grand, which is crazy. I was talking to Tim on Twitter, uh, and it wasn't long ago that $20,000 was my best month ever. And I just did it in two days, which is absolutely crazy. But got a little ahead of myself, got a little greedy, and I want to talk about that trade on SHMP I took today. Um, basically, it was a follow-up trade of yesterday. That's when I entered the position, and it just wasn't a good trade. You can't always make good trades. You can't win them all. So I want to be fully transparent here talk about what happened. And then also kind of put it in perspective a little bit for you guys and also myself, because uh, I'm taking the rest of the day off here while we film this video to reset and come back and finish the week strong. So this was SHMP. And as we were talking about, it was a great OTC breakout. I love the daily chart. I've been watching it for weeks. So more or less, I was like mentally invested into this stock. I liked, I thought it was going to go, you know, like 20, 25 cents on a really clean OTC breakout. And that's not the question when we have a good OTC breakout. This wasn't a good OTC breakout. And I tried to make it one. Ended up losing 3,400 today, which is definitely uh, one of my biggest losses, probably top five biggest losses of all time. But yeah, putting it in perspective, I was up 20 grand the last two days, had a little minor pullback. Just like stocks can't go straight up, you can't expect your equity curve to go straight up without some pullbacks. Do I wish I trade this better? Sure, I'll break it down in a second. But yeah, sometimes you just need a reality check. And this is my reality check. Uh, gonna take the day, like I said, taking the rest of the day off to reset, come back tomorrow with some stricter rules, clear head, so that way I can end the month strong. But basically over here, uh, it's not on this chart, is where I sold my SHMP uh, morning plays on the day before. And then it really started pulling back, pulled back pretty strong. And we were looking at that 10 cent level, if you remember, as the breakout. So once it got to 10 cents, I was like, oh, it's just testing that breakout level. Uh, that happens a lot. You can't expect it to break out and then rocket ship upwards. So it started testing 10 cents and I decided to get in. At, for a short period of time, it was a good entry. Uh, I pretty much nailed the dip here, and I thought we would grind back up, close strong, didn't. We continued to be weak, and rather than cutting my losses, I decided to add to the position. Exactly what you're not supposed to do. Uh, terrible risk management, um, but I was mentally invested in the stock, so I wanted, wanted it to work. So I added, got a lower average here, and we had this hard snap into the end of day yesterday. But not a strong close, not a good close on an OTC breakout. I shouldn't have been in this position, but I was in it overnight, kind of weighed on me overnight, thought about it. I was like, this is just a terrible trade. It's a bad position. It's not how I wanted to end the day. It's not a trade I should have been in, but I did what I, you know, market opened and I just exited. I was like, I need to get out of this. Um, can't let it get any worse don't want it to blow up into a five thousand six seven thousand dollar loss so exit at the open wasn't the best exit but i just had to get out of the trade so then that way it didn't impact more of my future trades and we don't know it, it bounced a little bit at the open i could have minimized this loss but it could have been much worse if we saw a panic especially after such a weak uh fake out on this breakout here um it's not just not characteristics of a strong stock so full transparency Took a bit of a hit on Wednesday, the 12th of August, but that's part of the game. If you can't be a loser, if you can't accept the losses, you can't be a profitable trader. You have to be a consistent loser. You have to keep the losses small. So that way when your big gains come, you keep them, they stay big, your equity curve goes up and you continue to be profitable. So taking a step back, need to make sure these losses going forward are smaller, especially if August, it's August, it's supposed to be summer trading, it's supposed to be slow. Don't need to be burning mental capital and taking huge losses throughout the month of August if the market continues to be slow. It looks like we're slowing up a little bit today. So that's where I'm at. Just wanted to review some of the trades. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter, monotrader, M-O-N-O -O underscore trader is my only Twitter. Don't fall for any of the fake people out there make sure you check to make sure uh like if you're getting any messages from me it's probably not from me unless you message me first so don't fall for any of those scams and make sure you check out the 30-day boot camp i filmed it with tim i've talked about it a couple times 
but it's Tim and I sat down for 30 individual days, covered 30 topics to help traders jumpstart their trading to consistent profitability. From day one, we start out with some basic penny stock terms all the way to the end of it where we review Tim's trades. We go over everything. Risk management, which clearly I struggled with today, but um, we go over a ton of patterns like I talked about. Uh, it's an incredible course. I put some blood, sweat, and tears into it with Tim. Uh, it took a long time to develop. We wanted it out a couple months ago, but we wanted to have workbooks and quizzes along with the 15 minute video that you get every day. I love it, uh, highly recommend it. So again, if you have any questions, always on Twitter, also on Profitly, but that's all I got for today, guys. So catch you next time.